on this episode, Christian is unprepared again. Now, what is the sprite of my enemy? Oh, but things work out in the end somehow. All right, we have one enemy. Oops. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. However, in the end, the real enemy once again turns out to be male toxicity. Bam, the enemy comes at us, comes at us, bro. Hi everybody, I'm Christian. Welcome to Laziness Academy. Welcome to a little shmup where we are going to do a little shmup. <laughs> Welcome to a tutorial where we're going to do a little shmup. <laughs> anyway, um, have you seen our shmup? Have you see, really looked at our shmup? It's my awesome shmup. Bam, 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 bam. We're shooting beautiful bullets and hopefully you're shooting beautiful bullets as well. Um, and in a recent doggy zone, I gave you some challenges to do, and and yeah, yeah, this is this is basically where where things are getting really really interesting, where we can do interesting things, and uh, and create beautiful beautiful gameplay. In order for us to create beautiful gameplay, we actually need something to shoot at, and that's actually something that's going to be the next big goal. I want us to create uh, enemies to shoot at. And I want us to um, figure out collision detection. Collision detection is a big, big topic. Not something that we discussed today, uh, but that's you know the course. That's the course of our ship. That's the iceberg we're heading towards. <laughs> the collision detection collision with the collision with the collision detection iceberg is where we're heading at. Mm -hmm. But for now, in order to for this to work for that episode, we need to do the preparation and the preparation is gonna be we're gonna create some some things to shoot at. let's just have fun with objects again let's get back to the objects okay so we want to create uh, enemies um, so we need to gonna, gonna you know it's gonna be the same thing as with bullets the same thing as we stars we're just gonna create an array of enemies we're gonna go enemies Uh, we are gonna create a uh, empty empty bracket, right? And now we're gonna have to spawn an enemy. And let's just like spawn one enemy for now. And then we're gonna think about how to, we're gonna structure this. We're gonna say like something like local my n. Uh, it's gonna be empty. And then we're gonna it's my n is gonna have a position. Uh, let's go. 60, oh wait, my n dot x equals 60, my n dot y equals, it's gonna be all the way at the, at the top edge of the screen, maybe a bit further down. And let's say my n dot spr, let's just say my n also has a sprite, that makes sense. Now what is the sprite of my enemy? Oh, <laughs> I forgot about the sprites. Let's do some sprites. Now I'm gonna be cheating. I'm, I'm to be honest. I'm gonna be cheating. I already drawn a beautiful enemy, and I kind of want to kind of bring it back. I want to have a green alien. That's that's, that's what that was my my goal. Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just gonna copy the enemy I've drawn. But you know, it didn't take me much longer to draw that original enemy than it takes me to draw this one, right? Uh, it, I'm just like you know, just like putting down pixels, just taking care of the general shape. I definitely want to have like mandibles at the at the bottom because it looks a little bit more like. Uh, like a bug or something, right? Uh, something like this. And then, then I'm gonna fill it with green. Uh, I want to have uh, the enemies to have a very different color scheme from the ship. The ship is red and the enemies are green. That's kind of like makes sense to me. Although we might bring in enemies of different colors later. And then like a big eyeball, a single eyeball, and then something like this, right? So this is gonna be an enemy. This is, this is, uh, this, it's like a brain, green brain with mandibles. Now we want to animate this enemy a little bit. So let us just copy this four times. And just, uh, we're gonna animate the mandibles. And this is kind of like a very important lesson. Generally, when you're designing enemies, it's always a good idea to think about, you know, oh, uh, what can I animate this? You know, what can I animate about this? Just designing an enemy is not just not enough, <clears throat> I feel. Just making something look cool. Um, it's also worth thinking about what about this thing that I've created here? What about it? Can I animate? Why do we need animation, right? Like why? Why? Do you, like isn't that something that to make it look fun? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean animation is nicer to to look at, I guess, like in a very broad kind of sense. Like yeah, it's fun to look at something that, that's moving. But I think the very important principle of animation is also like to convey 
you know, what is interactive about the game? If something is moving, I assume that it's alive that is, or some kind of machine that is working, that is something that is functioning. And I assume that it will react to something that I do. I assume that this is, is doing something, right? It's also animation also attracts our attention. Like if something is animating, I'm going to look, oh, no, something is happening there. I'm going to look there, right? If, uh, if something's not animating, I'm going to assume maybe that it's, it's just background. I'm not, maybe not going to even notice it. Right, so that's the reason why we're animating things. That's the reason why I want to animate this monster here. Because I want people to think that this is something that is maybe alive, that is, you know, doing something, that is something that's definitely, that, that will react. So if you see something like this and you can shoot, you will think about, hey, what happens if I shoot at this, you know, something like this. And by the way, this is also why I want my ship to animate. And now spaceships or planes usually don't have a lot of animated parts. They're kind of like objects that fly. And that's why it was important for me to have like the um, the little flame at the bottom. That's also important because it makes the ship look more alive and it draws attention to the player and makes the player think, okay, this is an, a, a, a working machine that I'm controlling here. Just like some strategic high level ideas. Uh, I think it's very easy for us, for us to fall into these patterns of I'm just going to repeat whatever other games did without actually realizing or understanding what it actually does. And I think it's worthwhile every now and then to take a step back and think like, whoa, what, what the heck are we actually doing here? Why are we doing these things? And these things become very, very obvious whenever you have situations where, where you just didn't do something. We are like, hey, maybe I can get away without animation. And then people are just not getting it. People just like, there's so often I see games where you just don't know, know what you're moving. Like this uh, screen starts and like, what even am I? <laughs> it's because I'm, too many things are moving or nothing is moving. And it's like, I, I press the button, nothing happens. Um, or where maybe there's too much movement. Maybe you have like, oh, I'm gonna make an awesome background animation where this thing is blue, and people are like obsessing about this background animation. It's just supposed to be something that is like nice and pretty, but but now people expect uh, that to be interactive. Right, so for now, I just wanna create like this little sprite, sprite number 21. I'm just gonna set it to 21. Now I've created this object. I still have to put the object into the enemies um, uh, array. So we're gonna go add enemies my n. Good. So we create a little enemy. We put the enemy into the into the array. Um, now let's let us draw the enemy. Let us draw the enemy on the screen. Um, ma, 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 ma. where are we drawing the enemies? Now we're gonna have to think about the order of things. I want to draw the enemies underneath the bullets. So here we're drawing the bullets. And so I'm gonna dr draw the enemies underneath and I'm gonna just take this. I'm just gonna take this. I'm just gonna put it in here, plop. And I'm gonna call it drawing enemies and instead of the balls we're gonna go call this en enemy and just like replace all of the uh, entries of balls with enemies and then here my n we're gonna replace my bull with my n so because we're drawing a sprite on on x and y position that we take from the objects it's literally the same thing i'll be doing here Except here we took sprite 16, like the bullet is sprite 16, but now the sprite is no longer just 16. We actually have to pull the sprite from uh, from our enemy object. So we're gonna go my n.spr. I'm gonna pull the sprite number from, so now the entire sprite statement is actually driven uh, by, by the object in the array and so far so good. Save run. All right, we have one enemy. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Perfect. There's one enemy and we shoot and the shots fly right past the enemy. There's another problem that the enemy is not moving and that's something that we can do really quick. So when we're doing the update, enemy update. Um, here we're moving the bullets. Let's just, just move the enemies right afterwards. Uh, so we're going to call moving enemies. 
And again, we're drawing, going through all of the enemies. We, we have like a little helper variable min, and then we're just gonna go min.y. Uh, let, let's just make it go down really quick, really quickly. We're gonna go take the y value. Oh, I actually did something that I, I, I haven't explained yet. So I'm gonna explain it now. I think this is a good opportunity now. We often use a situation like this where we're gonna have, you know, y equals y plus one, right? When we are just taking the contents of the value and we're adding something to it or subtracting something to it. That's something that happens all the time. It happened in the first episode, right? Or second episode. So we have this here, we have this here, we have this here. Well, I, almost. We have this all the time. This is something that all the time happens. And there's a quicker and easy way of doing this. Instead of y equals y plus one, you can always also say y plus equals one. Plus equals one. This plus equals sign allows us to skip this y basically. We're just, just gonna say like, we're adding one to y and saving the result in y. Like it just like, you know, saves us a little bit typing. And you know, if the variable is short, that doesn't make a difference. But if that's the variable, you know, if it's an object dot property, you know, it's a property inside an object, uh, then repeating it gets kind of gets a bit tedious. So you can just go plus equals, plus equals one. And that's the same result. And so now if we run this, bam, the enemy comes at us, comes at us, bro. But alas, nothing happens and disappears off screen. Okay. Now, you, this is not the greatest. <laughs> now, even if there was collision detection, this is not a great enemy. Um, so yeah, I'm mean, gonna have to maybe think about. Let's just yeah, let's just maybe try to maybe wiggle it around a little bit. My n dot x plus equals r and d. Let's let's just add a random number to it. Let's see what happens. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Now it veers to the side now, and the reason for that is, is because um, we add a random number and that random number is always positive. It's a number between zero and one, so it's basically zero comma something something, uh, but always adding something, right? So we can um, do minus 0 0.5. So we can like offset this a little bit. So sometimes it's negative, sometimes it's positive, right? So we're gonna run this. And now, okay, now it's okay, but it's kind of like stays in the center. It's, it doesn't move too much. So maybe R and D two and then minus one, something like this. Let's try that. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Let's go four minus two. Let's, let's go like this. Oh yeah. <laughs> now no, he's really twitching. I, I, mm, I'm, mm, I'm not, not really that happy with it, with that, to be honest. I'm just going to keep it at zero for now. Um, so it just goes straight because I want to maybe focus more on the animation on the, of the, of the, um, uh, uh, sprite. I think that's more important. So, uh, yeah, let's just try that. My n dot SPR plus equals, uh, one, we add one to the sprite. And then if you go and we go one my n dot spr uh, if my n dot spr if that's greater if the animation runs out if we are at greater than twenty four because we start twenty one and we go greater than twenty four then we're gonna return so it's greater than uh, spr uh, it's greater than twenty four uh, then my n dot spr equals uh, twenty one. So now you can see it's animated. Perfect. Oh man, look at this, 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 this nasty, nasty little, little guy. Something I don't like maybe about animation is that it's, it is a bit hectic. It is a bit quick, right? It's, it's just like this, this, I mean, it's, it looks a bit bug-like, but it would be nice to maybe slow down animation. Maybe we can pull this off. Uh, something you can do is you can add a 0 0.5 here, but you will see, oh yeah, it actually works. It actually works. I'm actually happy about that. Uh, I thought maybe you have to floor it somewhere, but actually uh, you can also use, yeah, yeah see? Uh, but something I don't like now is that it doesn't, it doesn't seem to show this to 24. What's happening here? It seems like it just like goes to 23, but doesn't go to 24. Oh, I know why. 
huh, interesting. So the problem now here is that um, this if statement triggers too early. It triggers too early. The reason why it triggers too early is that uh, we are adding 0 0.2 on every frame to the sprite. And when we reach 24, right? Like, let's say we reach sprite number 24, that's this sprite. And then we add 0 0.2, then we're gonna result in 24.2. And that's bigger than 24, so it immediately resets to 21. So the 24 is shown, shown, but it's only shown very briefly, so we never actually get to see the 24th frame. Uh, and the solution for that is, in this case, we're gonna um, uh, make it fire on 25, and we're gonna say greater or equal 25 greater or equal 25. So only if we reach actually reach 25 or greater than 25, only then do we reset it to 21. Now, and now we have a beautiful animation. Now it, this is a bit too slow. So I want to like tweak around the speed. Oh, that kind of like feels nice. Yeah, that feels nice. That feels like a really nasty little, little bugger. Oh man, I love him. Mm -hmm. It's my child, my beautiful little child. Now I said I wanted to show you some things. And maybe that's 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 gonna be a good opportunity. I want to maybe delete the enemy when it leaves um, the bottom of the screen. Uh, but uh, last time around we had like the problem with the for next loop. We had to go backwards to the loop. I actually want to show you a completely different type of loop, a completely new loop that is actually very useful when combined with objects, especially good for objects. Let me show you what I mean. For so this was the old old loop, the for i equals zero, but this one is different. My n in all uh, enemies. And then you can actually leave out this local variable. What? What? What is this? Does that even work? That works. Hey everybody, this is Christian from the future with an assist. Um, this is a bit hard to explain because this is a little bit magical. Uh, but yeah, we are introducing a new type of loop here. Uh, previously, when you look above, we had like this for i loop where we have this i counter and we use that i counter to go through all of the objects in an array. And then we always take an object, set it to a helper variable and then executes the code on this. It was a bit of a, was a, bit of a convoluted uh, loop here. And this new loop kind of like does all of that, but just like simplified and streamlined. So this is the for in all loop. And so what it does is it basically, when it starts out, it takes the, this array here, this an enemy's array, uh, takes the first object from that array and sets the my and this little helper variable, sets this variable to that first object, and then it executes this code on that first object, assuming that my n is that first object, right? So it just goes through all this, all this code and my n is the first object. And then when it's finished, it just takes the second object from the enemy's array and just repeats this entire code uh, where my n then becomes the second object and it then takes a third object and so forth. So it goes through all of the objects from the enemy's array and repeats this code, uh, always assuming that my n is, you know, the next uh, object from the array. So yeah, this basically does the same thing that we did before with the for next loop, just without the little counter and so forth. It's a bit more streamlined, a bit more simplified. And the reason why I like to introduce the for next loop first is that I think the for next loop is a bit more um, uh, a bit more um, flexible. It can be used in different situations. And because of the counter, you kind of like understand what it's doing. Whereas um, it's kind of nice that this loop is kind of like really streamlined and very, very simplistic, but also it's a, a bit magic. You don't really see what's happening. And so that might be a bit more difficult to understand at first. Um, but because of its, of its simplicity, uh, we are going to be probably uh, using this more and more in the future, especially in situations where we're going through an array of objects. The cool thing, there's there's negative things about the loop and positive things about the loop. Positive about things about the loop is that it's agnostic about, you know, things being removed and added to the loop. You can do a, delete an object from here and it doesn't care. It doesn't do like the, the problem that we had previously with the bullets where we deleted the bullet and then it's the next, you know, the next entry in the array was empty suddenly and then it was like, oh no. 
it, that that problem doesn't up, doesn't come up here. You can just delete any, all the enemies uh, and and so forth, and it will never have a problem. So that's really nice. It's also kind of like, but in this case, when you're iterating through an array, it's kind of like neat that you don't have to create an extra local variable here. Like here, you kind of like can leave off this line and it just like comes with this kind of helper variable kind of built into the loop. That's kind of nice. Um, so it's kind of like, you know, more better, this kind of loop is pre more better prepared for, for the task that we are that we're solving here. The negative thing about this is that we don't have I we don't have like a counter. So we don't know how many times this loop gets repeated. We kind of like don't have keep keep track of it. And for example, when the situation we're here where with the stars, you know, where we use the I to space and uh, not the stars with the hearts. We use the I to space the the hearts to, to calculate the spacing between the hearts. Uh, because you don't have an I, you just can't do that. So that's kind of like a bit annoying. There is a different type of loop that we can also use that kind of brings back uh, the, this counter kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to talk about that later. Right, so I think from now on, whenever I'm iterating through through an array, I will prefer this loop because it's kind of like really nice and, 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 and elegant, I feel. And now in this loop, we can do something like my n uh, if my n dot uh, y is greater than 128, then I delete my n dot uh wait not my n we delete enemies my n like this so whenever an enemy leaves the screen we delete the enemy now actually i might want to bring it back to the to the like like we did with the stars like to respawn it at the top we're gonna see how the gameplay works later on but for now i just wanted to spawn an enemy and and have it on the screen cool now there's something i wanted to actually discuss It's kind of, you, you notice how, you know, we basically copied the stuff from the bullets uh, when we're drawing the bullets and we just, you know, basically could reuse the same code to draw the enemies, right? You just reuse the code, it's the same code. And whenever that happens, you kind of like realize, wait a minute, maybe you can just like, maybe I can just use the same function for both of them. Maybe I just like don't need to repeat the code. Maybe I just like, because they're same, the same kind of object. So why don't we just use the same code for those two objects? And we totally can do that. Um, so let's just say, I'm gonna create a new function. That is called function draw my SPR. It draws one of my sprites. What I'm going to dis discuss now is the concept of um, arguments. We are using arguments all the time. This is something we're using all the time. You already know about this. Look, in the draw function, right? Sprite, we're drawing a sprite. Open parentheses, 16, my bull, x, my bull, y. You know, th this is an uh, argument. This is what we call an argument. This is how we communicate with functions. We did that before. When we call a function, we sometimes provide it with some information. You know, I want to draw a sprite. What kind of sprite? Well, sprite number 16. And also, I want to draw it here, x, here, y, and so forth. Also, also maybe I'm printing something. I want to print this text. I want to print it in this position with this color, you know, this text, this position, this color. So that's why we have the parentheses. That's kind of like our little, inf you know, I don't know, container for uh, data that the function needs to perform its function. And the entries inside this little box inside the parentheses is what we call arguments. You could also call it parameters and so forth. Like there's the different ways. I like kind of like the name arguments because it feels like you're having an argument on the telephone <laughs> with the function, like you're calling it and you have an argument. Um, right. And um, so this is now the other side of the, of the like because this is a function call, this is how it looks like when you use the function. We, this is where we send arguments to the function. Now I want to show, show you how it feels like, how it looks for the function when you receive the arguments. So we're gonna create a new function called the draw my SPR, or let's just call 
DRW my SPR. It's it's I just want to make sure that the variables are really compact because you know you don't have too much space here in PQ8. So drmsper is the name of this function. And I want this function to receive an argument. An, an argument. I want to put an object as an argument. I'm gonna say like I want to have a function where I can send an object to the function and say, hey, draw me this. Okay? So this object, uh, from when we define the function, we're just going to have to uh, invent a name uh, for the object that we're about to receive, or the data, the variable that we're about to receive. And I'm just going to go sp. Or uh, let's just go with my, my, my spr, my sprite. OK? So this is now, again, like a local variable. Like like here, local, you know, like here we have a little local variable or here my star variable. It's like a little variable that we just define here in the, in the parentheses that gets filled with whatever we put in the parentheses when we call the function. Whatever we put in the parentheses will get inside the function. We're going to get a little variable that will be set to that thing that we put in the parentheses. So from here, from within the draw function, uh, we can actually do this uh, sprite statement. I'm just going to copy this out. Uh, and I'm going to go like, okay, uh, we're going to do the sprite statement. As my, draw draw this sprite, my spr dot spr, my spr dot x and my spr dot y. We're just going to pull all of the data, the x position and the sprite uh, uh, number from our, our object. And we're just going to draw a sprite according to that. Like a very little simple simple line, right? And so we can now use this function for us to simplify our code here a little bit. For example, here and when we draw the enemies, instead of like doing this whole long line, we can just go my, draw my spr my n. We're just gonna take this 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 object, this enemy object. And we're going to use this draw my spr function to just draw that object and that then the you know our function will take care of pulling the information out of the object and putting it on the screen and there is my our enemy still being drawn still the same thing just like underneath under the hood uh, something else happening and we, now we're going to use we're going to rewrite the code to to use this function also for the bullets now the problem that we immediately arrive at is that the bullets uh the 16 was kind of hard coded here, so we can't actually do this if we try this. Draw my SPR, my bull, if we could do it like this. Oh, <laughs> it actually works. It's funny. So it draws the X, and the X is is this X. It's it's, it's uh, somehow it's it didn't throw an error. I'm kind of impressed it didn't throw an error, but yeah, it, it wrong draws the wrong sprite. Uh, the way uh, to do to go around this is in the update function when we actually shoot the bullet. I want to actually set a sprite for the bullet as well. So in this little package that we had for our bullets, we just can add a new property uh, and the SPR property, and then we're gonna set set the sprite to 16. If you guys have animated your own bullets or if you do some shenanigans with your bullets, you probably already did this. Um, but in this case, we just can easily expand the, uh, the bullet objects to also include uh, this property sprite. Um, so the bullet kind of like has the same properties that the enemy has. It has X position, Y position, and a sprite. Oops, I was pressing the wrong button. And bam! Now you can see we're using the same function for bullets and enemies, because bullets and enemies are both just objects that have sprite, X position, Y position, so we can use the same function for them. And we're using... Um, the argument to to run to call our own function and to send that function a little object and that function doesn't care if it's an enemy or an, a, a bullet it just takes the information that it needs to draw a sprite on the screen nice nice very useful very useful little function simplifies our job a little bit so now that we have this thing why didn't we can, like we could also simplify the other stuff here as well yeah so for example, our little ship 
we have ship X and ship Y. How about we put, we draw our ship using this same function? Like again, just like bringing things together, reusing as much as we, as we can. So everything is kind of like nice and uniform. Sure. Let's just create a new object called ship. Ship. I'm going to go ship.x equals 64 and ship.y equals 64. And then maybe like ship.sx equals zero. That's this here, right? And then ship.sy equals zero. And then ship.spr equals two. All this data we just packed into one little object as the ship object. Now, if you run this, it's gonna go completely wrong because right now all of our code depends on the different variables that we just destroyed, and and we now have to go through the code and change it so it works with a little with a little object that we just created. But yeah, let's just go through this uh, real quick. So let's see what happens. Um, don't, nothing happens uh, in, in here, but here is going to be where things are going to be diff difficult. Oh, oh, actually, yeah, yeah, here. In update game, um, so we're going to go ship.sx equals zero dot, dot sy equals zero, ship.spr equals two. Now here is going to go ship.sx, ship.spr, ship.sx, ship dot SPR. Usually we're just act actually adding a dot here everywhere. That's kind of a little bit intentional, I have to say. But if you change your, if you're using different variable names, you have to maybe pay, pay attention here. Here's a bit diff difficult. We have to, we have to do something like this. Ship.x and ship.y. Okay. Okay. Now here is where we're moving the ship. And this gives us an opportunity to use this new this new operator that we just learned, plus equals, plus equals. Just like updating our code with the new knowledge that we have. Uh, moving the bullets doesn't concern us. Uh, moving the enemies also doesn't concern us. Now this is the flame. Uh, that's not being used with an object right now. That's okay. Um, ma, 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 ma. Uh, what is this? oh yeah this is checking if we hit the edge uh oh, that's actually a very old code that we're just going to update right now and we're not going to care about this too much all right so this was the update function now the draw function now here's actually we are i'm gonna use this new tool so we're gonna go draw draw my spr and this time we're just gonna draw my my spr ship so we're gonna leave this out and that's gonna be it and that's I think most of it, let's see. Uh, ah, okay, the flame, where we're drawing the frame that, that is still using the ship X and ship Y variable, we're gonna dip, replace it with ship.x and ship.y. That's good, let's see. Right, now there is a problem with, I think this looks like the muzzle flash, that's right, the muzzle flash here that also uses the ship X. And ship Y, and this is you know this is. We can just keep trying this until until we don't run into any bugs anymore. Cool, cool. good. See. Now we're using the same function draw my SPR to draw our ship. We're using it to to uh, draw the enemies, draw our enemies, and draw the bullets. That's great. We could technically even simplify this even more. For example, we could take this this entire for next loop and just create a function that just takes a whole array as an argument. You just put an entire array as an argument into a function. And that function already has that little helper function, like um, it would be a function like here, that loops through an array and draws all of the sprites in an array. That's something that you could also do. And then we could maybe simplify all of this into like two little statements, two little uh, function calls. Um, but actually something I, we can do instead is actually to use this little new uh, loop that we just found out about. How about we rewrite this to use this little loop? Where is the little loop? Here this for my n in all we're just going to use this type to draw the enemies and draw the bullets so we're going to go use go for my n and all enemies too 
Bam. Like this, just, just drops right in. And then we can reduce one line. We can get rid of the one line. Uh, we can do the same thing with bullets for my bull, not my n, my bull. We're going to have to use the variable my bull so it matches the draw sprite we call. Now we, we call it bulls, right? We call it bulls. I guess the enemies should have been ends, <laughs> but ends kind of like is a bit. Uh, yeah, something like this. Let's see. Right. Uh, a bit more compact, a bit more 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 clear what's happening. Now there's uh, one last little thing that maybe the the flame should have maybe been its own object. I'm not really sure, but you know what? At this point, I'm just gonna leave it like this. I think the reason why I wanted to have the ship in its own object is because uh, moving on, we are going to do collision detection. And if we're doing collision detection, it's kind of nice if we are doing collision detection with things that are similar to each other. And in this case, I really wanted to have the bullets, the ship, and the enemies. I wanted to all of these be objects that are have similar properties, X position and Y position at least. So later on, when we do collision detection, we can do collision detection between the three of them. But that's something that's kind of like will come up in the next episode. For now, for now, we're gonna move on to the doggy zone. That's right. All right, in the doggy zone, as always, we are going. I'm gonna give you some tasks for you to experiment with, so you gain some your of your own experience, so you kind of like understand uh, better personally, you know, how things work, not just like listening to me explaining you things. So. Um, this time we spawn a single enemy here, and the you know the obvious next step is uh, we're gonna take uh, in the future is gonna be spawning more enemies. But I actually want you to try it yourself. Like how you would you spawn more enemies? Let's say you want to sp spawn a whole swarm of enemies. Let's say we're gonna spawn five enemies, ten enemies. I want you to try to spawn many enemies. I want you to try to spawn enemies that are kind of like coming. Uh, one after each other. So it's not like ooh, they appear all at the same time on the screen, but you know, they may be flying in over time. So there's like a pattern to them coming in. That's going to be one, one challenge. Spawn a lot of enemies. Challenge number two. How about we have a situation where there's different types of enemies? So we have to kind of like make sure, I mean, the type, uh, that means that you have to create a different animation for a second type of enemy. And that means you have kind of after the whole animation happen, stuff that is happening, which means like the beginning enemy sprite, but also like the, the logic in, in the update function that takes care of the animation. That's something that you have to kind of like customize or something that you can change, maybe um, driven by the object or maybe just like an statement to accommodate different types of enemies. That's challenge number two. C create a second type of enemy that also spawns. Third challenge, a bit more simpler, just like add a, a new property to the enemies so that they're kind of like they're slightly different enemies. Maybe some enemies are flying faster. Very simple thing. Some enemies are moving slower. Some enemies moving faster. It's a very simple thing. Just, I just want you to add a property to the enemy that's kind of visible with a naked eye. Maybe some enemy is moving straight and some enemy is moving diagonally, for example. Uh, adding a uh, horizontal speed basically to the enemy that is different from enemy to an enemy. Uh, I want you to add a property to the enemy that is visible. That's going to be the third challenge, a more, bit more easier challenge. And that is it. That is the end of this episode. As always, a big shout out to the coffee crew that made this show possible. Yep, this video series is being supported generously by my viewers on coffee. Thank you so much for your support. And if you aren't a supporter yet, consider a sub or a donation over at Coffee. You get perks like being able to access new episodes ahead of time. Check it out at coffee.com slash lazydevs. So this was it. This was this episode where we put an enemy on the screen and we animated this and then we learned some tricks on how to deal with objects on the next episode. I think we are going to think about collision detection. We are actually going to get into the collision detection. We are going to collide with the iceberg of collision detection. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.